The service operation lifecycle phase is responsible for executing processes that optimize the cost and quality of services to the required standard. It is also responsible for supporting the business to meet its objectives. Service operation delivers and manages services at agreed to levels to meet business user and customer requirements. It also manages the technology used to deliver and support these services. The primary objective of service operation is to maintain business satisfaction, deliver effective and efficient IT services, reduce the impact of service outages, and ensure IT services are accessed only by authorized users. Service operation provides guidance in the following areas, services, service management processes, technology, and people. Services are all activities that form part of a service and are included in service operation. They can be performed by the service provider, an external supplier, or the user or customer of the service. Service management processes are the ongoing management and execution processes performed in service operation. All services need some form of technology for their delivery. Handling this technology is an integral part of management of the services offered by an organization. People manage all the processes and technology and drive the demand for the organization's services and products. Next, we will discuss the role of communication in the organization. Good communication is a part of every organization. Often, issues between business partners, clients, and customers are mitigated or avoided with the help of effective communication. An important principle of communication is that it must have an intended purpose or a resultant action. Communication must be aimed at a clear audience and involve the audience's active participation. In the next screen, let us discuss the types of communication typical to service operation. Some types of communication are typical to service operation. They are routine operational communication, communication between shifts, performance reporting, and training. Routine operational communication includes incident tickets resolved on time and communication between service desks and users or technical teams. Communication between shifts includes shift handover reports. Performance reporting is the communication related to emergencies such as outage or service downtime notifications to users and customers. Training on new or customized processes and service designs is another form of communication related to service operation. In the next screen, let us discuss the types of events. An event can be defined as any change of state of a configuration item or component of the service relevant to the delivery of the service. Events are typically notifications created by an IT service, a CI, or a monitoring tool. Events can be classified into three types, informational, warning, and exceptional. Informational events are those indicating a normal operation, such as when a user logs on to use an application. Warning events signal an unusual but not exceptional operation. They indicate that the situation requires a little more supervision than informational events, such as when the utilization of a server's memory reaches within 5% of its highest acceptable level. Exceptional events are those which indicate an abnormal operation. For example, when a user tries to log on to an application with an incorrect password. In the next screen, let us discuss alerts and incidents. Events can be classified into alerts and incidents. Alerts are issued when an event occurs. System management tools, which help implement the event management process, often create and manage alerts. The objective of an alert is to notify the concerned stakeholders so that corrective action can be taken if required. For example, when individuals log into a bank's website or perform a transaction there, they receive an email alert. An incident is an unplanned interruption of an IT service or a reduction in the quality of an IT service. 
It could be a failure of an IT component that has not yet affected the service, but can disrupt the service if left unchecked. Incidents can be raised by IT support teams and are managed by the incident management process. An example for an incident is failure of a server in a clustered mode. It should be noted that all alerts are events, but not all events trigger alerts. All incidents are events, but not all events are incidents. In the next screen, let us discuss problems and workarounds in the ITIL context. The process of managing problems and coming up with workarounds for them is called problem management. In the context of ITIL, a problem is the cause of one or more incidents or potential incidents. The cause may not be known at the time of incident's occurrence. Problems are initially classified as incidents and are documented in problem records. A workaround is a temporary way to restore service failures to an operational level. Example, rebooting a server. The reason behind the server's failure may not be known. However, on rebooting, the service can be restored. Workarounds are used for reducing or eliminating the impact of an incident or problem for which a full resolution is not yet available. Workarounds for problems are documented in known error records and workarounds for incidents that do not have associated problem records are documented in the corresponding incident records. Incident or problem records are created in the service management tool. In the next screen, let us discuss known errors and a known error database. Once a problem is identified based on its priority, effort is directed towards finding the root cause. A temporary fix or a workaround might be used to restore services to a usable level for the time being. The moment a workaround or an unresolved root cause to the problem is found, it becomes a known error and IT services are aware of the issue. Known errors are managed throughout their life cycle with the problem management process. Development teams or suppliers may also identify known errors. For example, application incompatibility reports for Windows by Microsoft. A database is created for known errors, workarounds, and their solutions. This database is called Known Error Database, or KEDB. It helps in faster diagnosis and resolution of incidents. In the next screen, we will discuss the priority of an event and how it is calculated. Priority means the relative importance of an incident, problem, or change. It is used to identify required times for action to be taken. For example, the Service Level Agreement, or SLA, may state that priority to incidents must be resolved within 12 hours. Priority is calculated based on the impact and urgency of the issue. Impact is the measure of the effect the issue has on the business processes of IT service support. Urgency is how soon the issue can be handled. Priority equals impact plus urgency. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.